What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Sinden guns. And uh, this video is more catered towards my customers. So if you don't own one of my systems, not everything that I'm gonna talk about here is going to apply to you. I will leave a bunch of useful links in the description. I definitely recommend that you guys check those out. Uh, they will have a lot of useful information, a lot of detail that I'm not going to go to in this video. And that's gonna be the Sinden Wiki, their Discord, and Andy Johnson, who has some very helpful videos on setting up your send in guns. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the toolkit and we're gonna select exit to windows. Okay, so next up, first thing we wanna do as far as windows settings is we wanna go to the start menu. We wanna type in camera and you wanna select this first option here, camera privacy settings. Now mine is already on, but yours is probably not going to be on. So you wanna go over here to change. And in your case, you would turn it on. And then you click over here and then make sure that this one is set to on right here. And down here, this one as well, allow desktop apps to access your camera. Both of those need to be on. That's the first thing, we can close this out. Go back, type in mouse, click on mouse settings. And then over here, click on additional mouse options. And over here under pointer options, you wanna make sure that this slider is all the way to the far right, so all the way to the fast side. And you want to uncheck this box right here. That's probably gonna be checked, you wanna uncheck it. Now that does make your mouse a bit faster and a little bit harder to control, but those are the recommended settings for the send in guns. All right, now we're actually gonna to get to the guns themselves. Those were just some quick Windows settings that you have to change. Hit apply on that, hit okay. Close everything out. Okay, so what I recommend you guys do is you take your guns and you label them. Label one as number one and the other one as number two. That way you know exactly which gun is which and you don't get confused. And another recommendation, and this comes straight from the Send In Wiki, is that uh, if you wanna avoid any issues, just go ahead and, and do this. This is what I did. I plugged in one of the guns in the front of the PC and one of the guns in the back of the PC, specifically on different USB type ports. So in the front of the PC, if you look at the ports, you'll notice they're all black inside. That means it's the older USB 2.0. And in the back, you have both options, but you also have the blue USB ports, which is USB 3.0. So go ahead and plug one into one of those ports with the blue connector and one in the front with the black connector. That way they're on separate USB buses and uh, you won't have any sort of conflicts or power issues. And according to their wiki also, they, they say that powered hubs are not recommended. So just keep that in mind and I will leave a link to that below. Okay, so we have the guns labeled. We're gonna take our gun number one and we're gonna plug that into the PC. I've already plugged mine in. And if I go to the start menu and I go to devices and printers, I can see that I have two Sinden devices. One is a camera and one is this keyboard icon device. This is the one that we're going to be interested in right here in a bit, but I'll get to that in, in a minute here. So we, this is just to verify that the, that the gun is plugged in and Windows is able to see it and everything's good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. And over here on the desktop, I have an icon for you, gun one and gun two. We're gonna double click gun one and you're gonna see that nothing happens. That's because it went over here to the tray. So we're gonna double click it over here on the tray. And if it opens up and closes back up, just go ahead and double click it again. Now I've already set some of these settings up for you. So don't worry about this. Again, link in the description for very detailed information if you guys wanna start tweaking these things. But right off the box, I'm just gonna show you the most important stuff. So the first thing you wanna do in here is you wanna to go to select light gun. You should only see one gun in here because we only plugged in one gun. So you wanna make sure it's highlighted blue like this and you wanna do select light gun. Click on that and you're gonna see that this name transfers over to this box over here. You can do other things in this window like you can, if you click on get light gun information, uh, it's telling me to stop it. So you would stop it over here like this. You would stop the software then you would do it. And then that'll tell you some information about your gun, like the uh, firmware version and all that stuff. 
Uh, but again, this is more detailed stuff that I'm not gonna get too much into detail in this video. So once you select the gun here, select light gun shows up here, you wanna click on save. Every single one of these tabs is gonna have a save button. And it is very important that, be, that after you make changes, before you move on, you always click on save. So now that the gun is selected here, we want to go over to the uh, button assignment tab. And all we're doing in here is making sure that this number one gun says one here and five here. That is all, everything else is standard and this should already be there because that is the standard configuration for the guns. Next up, we're gonna go to cursor offset and then right here in this box, you wanna type in the size of your TV. So if you have a 42 inch TV, you would type in 42. In my case, I have a 25 inch monitor. So I put in 25 and then you hit save settings. Okay, next up, we're gonna go ahead and calibrate the gun. So for that, first we're gonna go over here to border and you're gonna click on show high border. That's gonna give you this white border. And then you can go ahead and go to the configuration tab. And then in here, we wanna make sure that our gun is, is working properly. So first things first is you're gonna to wanna to click start because I stopped the, you know, I stopped it before. Remember I clicked stop to check the firmware information. You don't have to do that. So yours, if you didn't do that, yours will still be running. But for me, I'm gonna click start since I stopped it before. And now if I pick up my gun and I point it at the screen, that's what you see. Now, the one setting in here I'm gonna talk about briefly is exposure. So right now I have an exposure of minus seven. And if you look on the right, that doesn't look too good. You don't want to see any of that extra white stuff on the outside of the, of the monitor itself. Uh, you want to see a nice black background with a nice clear rectangle for the monitor. So if I go ahead and change the exposure setting, let's try minus eight. Let's click on set. That's actually too much or maybe not enough. Let me try minus nine. Set. No, that's too dark. So let's go back to numbers uh, minus seven real quick, just to verify something. Yeah, that's, and the reason that's happening is because I have a white wall behind the monitor and the light is, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, reflecting off of that white wall. So it's picking that up. So, but if I go back to minus eight and do set, now it's better. It's not perfect, but this is kind of the stuff that you have to play with in here. Um, you know, at nighttime when it's not bright, so bright in my room, minus seven is perfectly fine and that square looks super sharp and super crisp. Right now, because that white wall behind me is giving me issues, this kind of stuff is going on. Okay guys, that whole thing before was bothering me a bit that I didn't get the uh, the settings exactly correctly. So I just got up and I closed my shades and then also came over here. And if you look now, it's even, even just by doing that, it's better now. But then also, let's say you take the brightness setting over here and you decrease that. So I'm gonna make it, let's say 90. And then I go ahead and press set. And now I point it at the screen. You can see that it's pretty perfect now. It's all black pretty much behind the square and you have a nice clear outline of the square. So that's just to show you that it really matters uh, what room conditions you're in, especially if it's a really bright room with white walls. And it, all it takes is a, bit, a little bit of experimentation. So I was able to put the exposure at minus eight and bring the brightness down to 90. Click set on both next, next to each setting right here and then click save settings. And like I said before, I don't think it's necessary to do burn to light gun, but I like to do it anyway. It doesn't hurt. Click OK. And then if you go over here to border again, you know, you can click on show hide border. It'll bring it to 4.3 mode. If you click it again, it'll turn it completely off. So we want to do that. And then one thing I want to point out in here is this option right here, enable outer border. That's going to be helpful for anybody that has a TV or a monitor that has a very, very thin bezel that is barely noticeable you probably want to en enable outer border so that what the software will do it is it'll create an outer black border to simulate like a like a thicker bezel and then it'll put put the white border inside of that one so again a lot to play with in here to really tweak your guns 
and and make them work as as good as possible uh and you know again check out the links in the description because they go into a lot more detail i don't want to spend too much time on, on this stuff that's already been covered very well by other people last thing i want to show you guys here is the recoil tab here you can enable the recoil if you check this box or disable it if you uncheck this box so if it's late at night and you don't, you don't want to bother anybody you come into the software you uncheck this box and click save and update and that will disable the recoil so the other thing we're going to do the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and calibrate the gun so to do that i'm going to go ahead back to border again and i'm going to go ahead and click on show and here's the border now i'm going to go over to alignment and what you want to do here is you want to point the gun at the screen and look through the sights and you want to make sure that the mouse cursor lines up perfectly with the sights right so if it's let's say off to the right too much and like a little bit higher then you would go over here and you would click you know these arrows this one's for finer adjustments and this one's for bigger adjustments so if you need to make a really big jump because it's way off you probably want to start with this big one and then you can tweak in smaller increments with the smaller triangle so let's say i point the gun to the screen i'm looking through my sights and let's say right there i notice that the cursor is higher than it should be and it's off to the left more than it should be i would literally point the gun at one of these arrows and start shooting at them until that cursor moves to the right and it's exactly where I wanted. And then I would click on these down arrows to move the cursor down until it's right where I wanted. After that, you click on save alignment changes. And this is very important. You wanna go over to select a light gun, actually configuration, sorry. And you want to click burn to light gun. That is very important. I believe you only need to do that when you do the calibration and not the other settings. Like the other settings, when you make them, you just click save and that's good enough. I like to still go over here and do burn to light gun. Every time I go in here and I make a bunch of changes, I click save on each tab. And at the end, I go to configuration and do burn to light gun. But you really do need to do that when you run the calibration. Okay, you, you go over here, you finish your calibration, you click save, then you go over here to configuration and you click burn to light gun. All right, so we're going to close the software now and we're going to move on to gun number two. Before that, remember to go to the border and click here, click again to turn it off. So let's go ahead and close the software now. And actually one last thing I want you guys to do before you go ahead and unplug the gun Go to the start menu, click on devices and printers. Over here, you should see the two send-in devices. You want to right-click on the one with the keyboard, go to properties, go to the hardware tab, go to the properties button over here, go to details, and then right here in the drop-down, go to hardware IDs, and then we're going to look at this number right here, PID underscore 0F38. Over here on the desktop, I have a send-in gun IDs picture, that PNG. So if I open that up, you can see that over here, this 0F38 shown right here says that it is gun seven. You wanna make a note of that. So right now I have my number one gun plugged in and number one gun is gun seven. So you wanna go ahead and take note of that because you're gonna need that later. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out right here. I'm going to unplug gun number one and I'm going to plug in gun number two. Okay, so you should hear the Windows chime, letting you know you plugged something in. And this time we're gonna do it backwards since we're already in here, we're gonna figure out what the gun ID for the second gun is. So there's my new gun that just showed up with the camera. Remember, leave this alone, you don't wanna do anything with that. So right click this keyboard, properties, hardware, properties again, details, drop down, hardware IDs, and this one says PID 0F 39. If I look up over here, in my case, 0F39, I have gun 8 for number 2. So my number 1 gun is 7, my number 2 gun is 8. Yours could be 5, and number 2 could be 8, etc. You're just looking to match this number to this picture so you can figure out which number your gun is. Okay, so now we're going to close all of this stuff out, and we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did for the first gun to the second gun, 
but this time you want to select this second icon here for gun number two and you want to open that up. Now remember that it is going to go directly into the tray over here so you want to double click that and you see how my mouse is going crazy like that this is a very good tip to give you guys right now make sure your gun is pointed completely away from the screen because if not it is going to interfere with, with your mouse and you're going to have a hard time using your mouse so i just picked up my gun pointed it way down at the floor and now i can control my mouse no problem so let's go ahead and double click this little icon over here brings up the software and again we're going to do the same exact thing we did before so you want to go over here to select light gun your number two player gun should show up here go ahead and click select it's going to now show up here go ahead and click save and that is it for that step next we're going to go over to button assignment and on this gun number two you want to make sure that this number here says two and this one says six then we're going to go to cursor offset again type in the size of your tv right here if you have a 42 inch tv you type that in if you have a 50 inch tv you type that in mine is a 25 inch monitor so i typed in 25 and then i clicked on save settings all right so we're going to go to border again we're going to turn that on we're going to go to configuration and once again you want to point the gun to the screen make sure you have a nice clean square That is a big mess right there. So I'm gonna decrease this like I did with the other one. I'm gonna make it negative eight and I'm gonna click set. That's better, good enough for now. I don't wanna spend too much time tweaking this right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and calibrate the gun. So we go to alignment and again, you point the gun to the screen and you know you tweak it as needed to get it nice and square with your sights. After that, you click Save Alignment Changes, and then you go over here to Configuration, and you click Burn to Light Gun. We already talked about the outer border that you can play with as well. We already talked about turning the recoil on and off. So that is all that you have to do now. So go ahead and go to Border, click on here, click on here again to hide it, and you can go ahead and completely close out of the send -in software for Player 2. We already figured out our gun ID prior to doing the second gun changes. So in my case, I have gun number seven for player one, gun number eight for player two. So what we're gonna do now is we wanna plug in both guns. So I'm gonna plug in gun number one because my gun number two is already plugged in. There's that Windows chime letting you know you just plug something in. If we go to start menu and we go to devices and printers, now you can see that you have two sending cameras and two sending light guns with the keyboard icon. So now we're gonna go ahead and close this out and you wanna open up both instances of the software. So go ahead and click gun number one, double click on that. And then it's gonna go over here to the tray. If you don't see it right here, just click the little arrow and double click on it. Okay, and then we're gonna do gun number two right here. Again, it's over here, so double click on it. See, it went away, so you just do it again. Cool, so now we wanna go over to the Select Light Gun tab on both of these software instances. And it's very important in here, guys, that you have the two guns showing up and that each instance of the software has a different gun selected. So you see here, one is on COM5, one is on COM4. And over here, COM4 is highlighted. Over here, COM5 is highlighted. Also, very important, both of your guns need to have a different name. So let's say you have Sindin Light Gun Black, and then the other one here is also called Sindin Light Gun Black. That is no good, and it's not going to work properly. And as of right now, the process to fix that is not a, something that is publicly available. So you have to go over to the Sindin... Uh, wiki or actually not the wiki the discord and and seek help there you know let them know exactly what's going on that both of your guns are showing the same name and you need to flash the uh the firmware to change that the reason that is not publicly available is because theoretically you can cause some damage to your guns by by messing with the firmware um so you know if you're if you're a customer of mine you can reach out to me and i will go ahead and help you through that if you're not 
definitely go over to the Sendin' uh, Discord and ask for help because I don't want to be responsible for your guns, um, you know, for breaking your guns, basically. So, again, very important that here your gun's name is a different and that and over here, select a light gun, you have different names for each gun. So, this one here is Sendin' Light Gun Black and this one is Sendin' Light Gun Player 2. So, I'm all good to go there. And then you can always go over here to the configuration tab and you can point both guns at the screen and make sure that they're both working correctly. So if I do gun number one. Oh, and don't forget to turn on the border because it's not going to work if you don't do that. So go over to border, click on show hide. Now go back to configuration. You're going to see it looks much better now. Now, if I try gun number two, see that one is a bit of a mess, and that is because look at the exposure setting on this one. It's minus seven, whereas this one is minus eight. I guess I didn't click set and save before. So you can just do it right now. I'm gonna go ahead and do eight. I'm gonna go ahead and click on set, and then I will do save settings. If I point it at the screen now, much better than a minute ago. And that is it for the actual guns, guys, for the actual settings in Windows and in Descendant software. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Border tab, click Show Hide. If you don't see it, just move the software over like this and so you can click it again, get rid of the border completely. And I'm going to go ahead and close out both of these instances of the software. And that is it. This next step we're going to do is going to be very proprietary to my systems. This is something that I wrote, a little script that I wrote. That is going to get your guns set up in Hyperspin, Rocket Launcher, and MAME. So all you have to do is over here on the desktop, you're going to have this shortcut, Arcade One Send in Installer. We're going to double click that. And it's going to ask you, do you know the number of each of your guns? If you follow the directions up to now, you should know them, but let's say you don't know them, you just click on no, and then this reference picture here will open. All right, and so then to figure a video, out which gun number, let me stop that. A video will open that shows you how to get the gun IDs, the gun numbers. That's what we just did before, but here it is again in case you need it. Once you watch, watch the video and you do what you have to do, look at this for reference, etc. you can go ahead and close out of this window and at that point, the installer will continue. So now it's asking you, how many guns do you have? Well, I have two guns plugged in right now, so I'll select two. Then it asks you, two gun setup. Let's select your player one gun. Is it gun five? Now, remember my first gun was gun seven. So I'm gonna say no. Is it gun six? No. Is it gun seven? Yes. Then it will ask you, now let's select your player two gun. My player two gun is number eight. So is it gun five? No. Six? No. Seven? No. Is it eight? Yes. Setup complete. Click OK. And you're all done. Now that really is all the setup that you need to do. At this point, you can open up, you know, Hyperspin, start playing games. However, I'm going to show you guys some other useful stuff that you should know about and that could make the guns work even better for you. So this whole next section is just going to be, I'm going to go ahead and fire up some games and I'm going to go ahead and show you some tips, some uh, tips and tricks uh, that could potentially make your experience a lot better. Go ahead and skip the intro. And now if we scroll down, you're going to see two gun game menus. This first one says Gun Games Aim Tracks, so obviously that's if you have Aim Tracks. And this one says Gun Games Send In. So we're going to go into that one. And we're going to select Area 51 because it's a simple game to test with, so we'll start that up. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is if you want to, how to turn off the crosshairs. All you have to do is press tab on the keyboard and go down to crosshair options with your down arrow on the keyboard, press enter, and then right here for player one visibility, you want to press the left arrow until it's off. If you want to do the same thing for player two, go to player two visibility and then turn that off. At that point, you can just press tab again 
And if you point the gun at the screen now, there will be no crosshairs. Now, when it comes to inserting credits and pressing the player start, you can do it three ways. If you have a control panel, use your regular insert credit and player start buttons. If you have an Xbox controller, same thing, the usual process of the back button or the select button, the one to the left of the big X in the center of the controller, that is your credit button. And obviously your player start is your start button. And if you want to do it from the gun, you're going to go ahead and to insert credit, you would point the gun completely away from the screen and on the right side of the gun, the button furthest to the front is gonna be your credit button. So that's what I'm gonna use right now. And I'm inserting credit. And then if you point the gun at the screen, that same button will be your start button. So as you can see, I have no cursors right now, uh, crosshairs I should say, but you know, the sending gun is pretty accurate. So if you aligned it properly before, if you calibrated it, you should be able to, to look through your sights and play the game just fine. Cool, so to reload, you can either shoot off the screen and squeeze the trigger. You can use the reload mechanism on the Sinden where you cock back that bottom piece. Or you can use on the left side of the gun, the button closest to the front of the gun will also reload. So you have three options to reload. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this game real quick. And I'm just gonna show you guys the test menu of this game. Now, this is something that is not necessary for every game. But if you want to do it anyway for every game, it can hurt and it will actually probably improve the performance. So this is just the actual game itself. We're going to go into the test menu and take a look at how to align the gun in the actual test menu of the game. I will leave a link to the, in the description to the send in wiki where they go game by game and they give you some tips for each game independently. And this uh, process here of going into the test menu, again, is not necessary for all games. Most games, it's not necessary for it, but for some it is. Like for example, Carnival, you have to do this. But let's go ahead and go into that menu. So you're gonna press F2 on the keyboard. Remember, if you have a keyboard like Logitech K400 that has an FN key, you have to hold down FN and then press F2. So that's what I have and that's what I'm gonna do. I had to unpause the game for it to let me go into the test menu. It wouldn't let me do it while the game was paused. Okay, so one thing to note is that every test menu is going to be different because this is the real test menu of each game as if you were at a real arcade machine. So they're all going to be different. So it's very important that you read the bottom so that you know how to go about navigating the test menu. In this one, it says to select test, use the gun. So you literally point at the menu uh, selection that you want and you go ahead and squeeze the trigger. So I'm going to go to gun test, squeeze the trigger, and then it says to run test, press right start. That means player two start. So in the case of the sending guns, your player two start is going to be the number two on the keyboard. So I'm going to press number two. And now it just tells you what to do. It says aim each gun at the crosshairs below and hold the trigger until flashing stops. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It says done. I'm only gonna do one gun right now. So then it says to return to the menu, press left start, meaning player one start. And that is gonna be the number one on the keyboard. And that is it. Now you're gonna calibrate it within the test menu. Best thing to do at this point, just go ahead and click and, and press escape on the keyboard. So it kicks you completely out. And then, you know, you would go back into the game and hopefully your gun will be working even better than it was before. And like I said, this is not a necessary step for most games. It's only going to improve your, your accuracy if you do do that. Um, but some games like Carnival, you do have to do that. So let's go ahead to Carnival. Start that up. And I'm gonna show you guys the trick with this one if you only have one gun, because this one asks you to calibrate both guns and it won't let you move on unless you do that. So I'm gonna show you guys a trick on how you can get around that. So again, if you guys wanted to disable the crosshairs, here's my crosshair, you would press tab, go to crosshair options, player one visibility off, player two visibility off, and then press tab to get back into the game. We're going to go right into the test menu on this one. So 
hold down my Fn key and press F2. Just give it a minute. As you can see, this one's completely different than the other one. Volume up, volume down to move up and down, test to select, credit to exit. So volume up and volume down would be your plus and minus key, keys on the keyboard. So I'm gonna press the plus key on the keyboard to highlight gun calibration. And then I'm gonna press the test button to select it, which remember it's F2. Have to hold down Fn plus F2. Now it takes you to the gun calibration. It's telling you what to do. We're gonna shoot that X on the upper left corner there. And then on the bottom right corner. And that is it for gun number one. So now it says to point the gun toward the screen to start targeting and pull the trigger to accept calibration. So if you feel good about this, you go ahead and pull the trigger. Now it's asking you for your second gun. If you have a second gun, go ahead and do this. If you don't, we're gonna trick it into using the mouse as a second gun. So go ahead and press tab on the keyboard. If you're still in this menu here from before, go to return to previous menu, press enter. Then we're going to go to input this machine. Do not select general, just input this machine. Press enter on that. And we're going to go down here to player two, button one. You're going to press enter on that. And you're going to do a left click on your mouse. There we go. If you screw up and you get more characters than what you see here, it should say mouse, it should say mouse a number and then B0, for example. It shouldn't say mouse X, Y, or anything like that. So if it does, because you move the mouse too much or something, press down to get off of that option, back up to select it again, then press enter, and press your left click to do it again. Should be nice and clean like that. Mouse one number, followed by B0, B1, something like that. Okay, then we're gonna go down to light gun two, X analog. And what you wanna do there is press enter, move your mouse left to right, Again, it should be a nice clean mouse with a number and an X. No mouse X, N, Y, or anything like that. If you mess up, go down, go back up, press enter again and do it one more time. There you go. Now we're gonna go to light gun Y2 analog. Press enter on that and move the mouse up and down. There we go. You have mouse one X, mouse one Y. Very important not to get confused and select light gun X analog INC or DEC. Do not touch those at all. So now that we have that done, if you press tab to get rid of this menu, you can see that your mouse is going to control the, uh, the cursor for player two. Now, here's a little problem. I turned off the, the crosshairs before, so I'm not seeing anything. So I'm gonna go back to tab. I'm gonna go return to previous menu. I'm gonna go to crosshair options, and I'm gonna turn this one back on or put it on auto, both will work. Press tab to get out of that menu, and now I can see the crosshairs. So I'm gonna go over the X and click, left click on that. Go over the X, left click on that. Again, click on the screen to accept calibration, and you are all done with both players, and you can move on and, and play the game. So if I go down with the plus key on the keyboard, and I select exit with my test, uh, button which is F2, hold down Fn and press F2 in my case. Give it a second and it will start the game up and you will be rock and rolling. Cool, so that, this here is just there because again, I left it on in my player two mouse. Uh, my player two is using the mouse right now. I'm just gonna put that over to the side here for now. It already has two credits, I'm gonna insert some more. So again, point the gun away from the screen on the right side, use the frontmost button. Then if you point it at the screen and press that same button, that's gonna be your start.
Okay, guys. And also, if you guys want to, when you guys want to exit the game, you know, you can use your exit key on, on a control panel, or you can go ahead and hold that same right side frontmost button. If you point it away from the screen, the gun, and you hold that for three seconds, it's going to kick you out of the game. There we go. And now you're back to hyperspin. So hopefully this video is helpful and uh, will get you up and going pretty quickly. It should because everything has been configured as well as it can be for you guys. Again, definitely check out the links in the description. Definitely check out the the Sindin wiki. A lot of useful information in there. Uh, check out uh, the videos uh, that I uh, linked below as well. And definitely join the Discord because you can get a lot of good help there. Um, that's going to be it. I will see you guys on the next one.